Okay, well, welcome everybody. This is pretty much our, our first virtual uh, mastermind. And uh, I asked uh, Abby, and thank you, Zeus, for being here. I just put this together with everybody, and uh, everybody that's here is new. Nobody has done a deal. Uh, and, uh, you know, Abby and Zeus have been uh, my right hand people doing a ton of deals. Uh, <laughs> and, and I've connected them to some of my partners and they've connected me to some people. And we are literally doing nationwide wholesaling. Uh, we just opened up Maryland. Uh, we're doing Georgia, North Carolina, South Carolina. We're doing uh, Sacramento, uh, California. We're doing Arizona. I think you guys are gonna send Arizona. Uh, I mean, we're pretty much, we were doing Colorado, uh, Colorado slowed down a little bit. Um, we were doing Oklahoma, Kansas. Uh, I mean, I can't even think of all the States that we have been uh, doing over the last uh, few years, but it's been, um, uh, New York, we're doing the Bronx. We, we closed two deals in the Bronx, um, over the last six months. I just talked to, uh, our main partner in the Bronx. Uh, the Bronx is, is, is a little bit tough, but we were able to do that. And so you guys sent multifamily. Those are multi-million dollar properties there. So, so we are literally doing a lot. And uh, I wanted to, to do a training because everybody here is new. They haven't done a deal. So I wanted to just kind of chat with you guys for a couple minutes, not too long, just so that, that everybody here can see what the process is there was a lot of confusion and I apologize to everybody because when Abby and I talk and, and, and Zeus and stuff, we already understand the basics. And so we kind of tend to kind of go, go, um, you lost the audio there, uh, Marianne. Can you guys hear me? Okay. Yeah. 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 Just okay. for a minute. We're back on now. Just for a minute. Okay. Okay. No problem. So I, I think we kind of tend to forget that uh, most people don't, don't, don't realize certain things. So I wanted to go through some of the things that I've been doing with you guys and the lists that I send uh, and how we're organizing things. So let's start at the beginning. Uh, when I initially started with uh, Virtual Ninja, I spoke to Abby and uh, I immediately knew because I had already been investing in real estate. So I think my first list was like three or four thousand people. Uh, and then uh, Abby and her team and Zeus, uh, you guys burn through a lot of numbers because you're dialing multiple times. So that right there, I, I think that there's a question that most of you guys have had, which is, well, can we start with a small list? And the short answer is absolutely not. You, you can't do that. You, can't, you cannot do that. Uh, if your result that, that you want is to, to, to do a deal maybe a year, maybe one deal a year, you, 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 you would get away with that. But then you would have to hire a different cold caller. Abby's service won't fit won't fit that model. So if you if you're under probably like 1000 or something, she's she's not going to be the best suit for you guys. So you're you're probably better off to go to a service like onlinejobs.ph and find somebody there because Abby can burn through maybe a thousand numbers in like a day or two <laughs> max. So so uh, and and that is dialing even that list multiple times. Uh, because what happens is there's going to be numbers that are not, that they're not accurate, you know, and, uh, and then there are going to be people who are going to say, hey, don't call me, stuff like that. So my recommendation is to have at least 5,000 uh, numbers on a sheet. Uh, every time I send Abby a 5,000 um, uh, number sheet, she goes, or a list, she goes through it in like a week or two. It probably doesn't last any more than that. Now, yes. if, if you want to scale that's, and you want to go ahead, Abby. Um, that's full time, 5,000. Yeah, that's, that, that's about right. So, so that gets us 
when we do that, and that is per week, right, Abby? Yes. That's per week. So, so between three and 5,000 uh, phone numbers, they need to dial per week. And when we do that, uh, then they send us between one and three potential deals per, per day. Sometimes it's going to be one. Sometimes it's going to be two. Sometimes it's going to be three. But these are qualified people that they've already checked Zillow. They've already checked, you know, uh, Redfin and, and Railer.com and so forth. And they say, you know what? We feel that this is a good lead. So why do you need that? Well, you need that because you got to see uh, Virtual Ninja as, as experts, as like your coaching when it comes to dialing. They're the experts. They know what they're doing. They've been doing this for investors all across the United States. And so that's one of the things that I was facing. I hired a team myself. Before I, before I connected with you guys, I had personally, I built a team myself of a bunch of different callers and, and, and skip tracers and people to do all of this stuff. And man, it was a nightmare. I was, I was literally running myself crazy because I thought I could manage them. And that is the number one thing that you guys are going to have to realize is that you don't have time to manage that side of the business, which is skip tracing, cold calling, and, and getting yelled at every single day. And that point right there is, is so, so big. So because most people don't have the type of personality to get on the phone to not get yelled at uh, on both fronts. On the front that you don't have probably the personality to connect with people in like the first 10 seconds. I mean, even, even less than 10 seconds. I mean, I would say like two, three seconds. You, you, you already irritated somebody because you're like the third person that called in the last you know, day or so. And so what's going to happen is that uh, you're going to get burnt out really, really, really fast. Now, Abby, what she does is she's got already the training in place. And she's got callers that have been trained with Brent Daniels uh, Talk to People TTP course, which sells for like 3000 or something, 4000 something like that. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. And so, Ab yeah, Abby bought that course. She trains the, the VAs from that course. So you don't have to worry about like scripts or anything like that. If you guys, if you guys go to Brent Daniels and start consuming his content, he's really, really good on his YouTube channel to show you guys how to make the initial cold call so that you don't get all the objections and blah, blah, blah. But even then, when people throw objections at you, you have to know how to handle those. And so Abby is, is a master at, at getting her people to, to, to take care of that side of the business for you. I am telling you, that side of the business, you don't have time for. You, 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 you need to spend your time structuring the deal. So when Abby sends you these leads every single day, what your job is, is to convert them. <laughs> so there are two stages of this marketing process. The first stage is to confirm you got the phone number, the right person, they want to sell, and they want to sell for a prize that could potentially be a wholesale deal. Virtual Ninja takes care of all of that, okay? Then the second phase of the sales process is to structure the deal in a way that you can make money, okay? And that's where I come in. So that's why you know, this one-two punch that we have going on here with Abby and me is going to work out very well for you guys because it's free training. It's free training. So right there, I want to pause real quick. And why am I doing this? Why am I putting this mastermind together? Well, because I JV with a ton of people and Abby knows this. It's like I'm sending her people and she's sending me people and we're doing deals. We're sending deals back and forth. Why? Because I want to have a percentage of as many deals as possible as I can have. I flip properties, buy and hold. We do sub two. We do creative financing and stuff like that. So we buy deals from wholesalers all the time, all the time, all the time. Okay. And so we buy and hold a lot and we flip a lot. I've been flipping for a long time. So that is the only thing that, that I do. I'm not going to sell you a course. Uh, eventually the mastermind will be a charge. <laughs> We're going to have 
we're going to charge for this mastermind, but at the beginning, we're not. Uh, and the prize is not going to be cheap either. You know, it's going to be $25,000 a year to join this mastermind, but we're wow. going to have it free for one, <laughs> for one year, for one year. Why? Because we're sharp, sharpening the saw and we're trying to get people in to, uh, so that you can join, be, be a founding member, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Why we can't accept more than one or two people max per state. We just can't. If you join this mastermind, you have the resources. So this is not something that you're getting trapped into or tricked into buying stuff or anything like that. We want you to do deals. In order to do deals, you have to get a cold caller. You can't do it on your own. So, so that, is, that is pretty much all I have as far as like the structure of it. We can get into the nitty gritty of it now. And, uh, and then you guys can start posting your questions that you were posting on the group last night. Okay. And we're going to sit here and we're going to answer every question, every single question until you guys fully, fully get all of your questions answered. That's why we wanted to have this, uh, this call today, just to kind of take care of you guys and make sure that you guys feel nice and understand everything that's going to go into things. So who wants, who wants to ask the first question, put it on the chat. But Abby, uh, do you have anything to add to what I said? Um, I think I'm going to wait for their questions, questions um, okay. so that I can gauge, you know, and know where their confusion is. Mm -hmm. oh, the, okay, so Marianne has a question. Um, for the list, uh, Ben said 5,000, 3,000 to 5,000 for the list. Um, that is for full time. Working eight hours a day, 40 hours a week. Um, for, say, part time. You're going to need to have minimum of, um, let's say, 1500 That's the minimum, 1500 per week. Per week, yeah. Yeah, per week. Well, um, for the duplicates, our dialer, um, whenever we upload a, a file, uh, your data, it will automatically delete the duplicates. Um, so there are no duplicates on the phone. Uh, mm -hmm. because we don't want to call them twice and ask them again if they're selling their property. 10K. So. Let me read that question. Um, Sarah's asking, if I send you a list of 10,000 records, that should keep you busy for a month? Um, if we're doing part-time. 10,000 if... We can we can exhaust the file in a month for say you want to hire a uh, full time because this is what we're gonna do. Um, what we're gonna do here is we will dial run through the list for a maximum eight times or until we reach them. It's up to you. If you said eight times is enough for me, or we can do 10, 15 until until you know they they got on the phone. That is actually the reason why we work one week in mm -hmm. a list. Uh, which is the Saturday, because mm -hmm. sometimes people are not available do during weekdays, but they are mm -hmm. in, um, at home during the weekends. Yeah. So that's what we do. And we'll, we me. always let our clients know if mm -hmm. the file is already exhausted, like we're not getting anything. You would notice that, or we would notice that too here. If the mm -hmm. campaign doesn't have um, a lead in a day, say um, sometimes what we do um, since we are very hands-on um, in the business, so what we do is we jump right into the campaign itself. Like we make the phone calls. Ourself. We make the phone calls ourselves and to see if what the problem is. Um, is yeah. it the list? Is it mm. um, the dialer? Is it the VA? Because mm -hmm. if I will not be able to produce and that lead, say after an hour or two of dialing, I was not able to talk to anyone, then we have a problem with the list. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Let, let me go back to a couple of things that you said there, Abby, because it's very important for everybody listening to, to understand this point. Number one point that you made is, and this is a question that you guys uh, don't know to ask uh, and, and won't know to ask until you have some experience dialing or hiring somebody to dial for you, which is the question of, okay, do you call somebody one time? or how many times you call a number, right? So you don't know to ask that question, but 
Abby answered it. They go through the list. They go through the list five, six, seven, eight times. And that's what she means by exhausting the, the list. Hey, we've called this list. We've called everybody on the list, you know, twice, three times, four, five times. So we've been going around and around your list multiple, multiple times. So that is one thing that uh, if you want to expand on that, the second thing uh, that, that Abby mentioned is the dialer that she has is very sophisticated. Uh, most of us will use something uh, like, like Mojo, for example. Mojo is not, is not able to do some of the, the ninja tricks that Abby's dialer can do. Uh, you, you have to be a data manager in order for you to use Mojo or some of these other tools that, that are out there for a single you know, company. But you got to realize that Abby has to manage, you know, many, many investors throughout the country. So that in order for her to do that, she has to have a very good data management system and dialing system. So her dialer is able to have multiple agents calling multiple lists at the same time and manage all that data. So when she says, Hey, I'm uploading your list to my dialer. The dialer is, is pretty much organizing the data, cleaning the data, dialing the data. That is something that, that you, have, you would have to have like an IT department in your real estate investment uh, company to be able to do some of the things that that dialer does. And if you go to Mojo, for example, you're paying at least $200 for their, their, their data a month. And you have to organize it. If you go to something like cold tools or anything like that, I mean, you really have to know how to organize that data and it gets more expensive the more features you add on cold tools, et cetera. Yeah. So that is a savings that you automatically get with Virtual Ninja. So point number three that she made that, that is very, very important that you guys cannot overlook. And that is that, those two processes and the management, not only of the people, but of the data is automatically taken care of for you guys. That is why, you know, I'm not trying to, to be here, you know, and uh, trying to push Abby on you guys. I mean, feel free to, to hire your own VAs, but you will come back to this training time and time again. Why? Because you, you, you're going to waste a lot of time. Your job is to be an investor. Your job is not to be a professional cold caller. They are the professionals. So those three points, please don't overlook them. Uh, anything to add on that, uh, Abby? Um, yeah, just about what you said. Because um, I, I, I remember this before when I was working with another coach. Um, so she was always saying to her students that you guys are the CEO of the company <laughs> so you should not be the one doing doing the initial um you know initial yeah. calls initial touch it's um the small task that you can dedicate you should not be the one doing that um you yeah. should be the one doing the big things which is what closing the deals closing the deal yeah orchestrating the deal organizing the people absolutely that is money making activities you know dealing with people shouting back at you on the phone that's not money making you're not making money when you do that it's not it's a waste <laughs> of time not, it's really? a waste of time yeah don't do that don't do that you got to learn that lesson right away so here here here's the big thing that i want you guys to understand when it comes to data when it comes to data you 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 will spend a lot of money on data uh, so let's go on to the next question because it touches on that from nancy uh, where do you get the list from PropStream, from connected investors, from bigger pockets, uh, from you, you can use the answer is yes. You can use all of those. You can use also list source. You can use batch leads uh, where and this is a question I, I actually have for 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 Abby. Look, Abby works with all kinds of investors. So she's able to, to tell us, to advise us who is getting the best data and how are investors out there getting the best data. So that is vital for us to understand because we want to learn from people's mistakes. We don't want to go and buy data and then figure out that that data was bad. And that's one of the things that, that, that Virtual Ninja brings because they can tell us where to go to get the best data. That's something I want to know. What do you think? Uh, Okay. Abby and, and Zeus. Um, 
based on experience uh, with the client, um, I'd say PropStream because it is um, the cheapest, the cheapest yeah. way to go. Um, yeah. Not other than it is the cheapest, but the quality I'd say is one of the best so far. So yeah. I'm not affiliated with the prop stream or anything. It's just that um, that is what most of our successful clients has been using. Um, some mm -hmm. of them have used batch leads. Um, for me, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna promote them because uh, we've had a lot of issues with mm -hmm. the batch leads. Yeah. Um, I have used also this one, um, the connected investors pin. If you guys have heard of that, T I N, um, it's also a good site to get a list because um, the filtering is really good. Plus, um, as far as I know, because I'm using one of our clients' a pin website uh, whenever I pull list for her, uh, it already has the skip tracing. But one of my clients said um, the one who checked on on the pin because I'm not sure of their their pricing, whatever. Um, he said that it will cost, I think, thousand to set up the, the software wow. and then a monthly fee. So I said, oh, okay. So that that's uh, that's way too yeah. expensive. You go to props if you don't yeah. want to use it. That's expensive for you right now. But I'd say their data is good as well. And the mm -hmm. skip trade too. So prop okay. stream um, is, is the number one for me. Um, and, and the second, if... If the price is not that high, a uh, pin is also a good one uh, from connected investors. Perfect. Perfect. Now for the skip tracing, um, mm -hmm. although I'm not promoting our skip tracing, this is if you already have a skip tracing, a well-known skip tracer or a company that does skip tracing that is really good. Um, you can use that, whatever. If you want us to do the skip tracing, we can do that as well. We've seen good results with our skip tracing. Uh, mm -hmm. based on comparison as well with other um, mm -hmm. deal machine yes uh, we uh, I have some clients who's using deal machine um, but compared to prop stream I'd still go to prop stream that's that's my advice I'd still go to props yeah yeah absolutely yeah prop stream uh, we use prop stream all the time I used to what I used to do is I used to go to Fiverr and I used to go to uh, to uh, onlinejobs.ph and I and I hired I used to have four skip tracers I used to have four skip tracers okay and they were working full time for me and uh, and then uh, you know because I thought it was going to be cheaper or whatever but the problem I had is is that they didn't have access to a good software to skip trace you know, and so they didn't, they weren't getting any data and then they weren't organizing the data correctly. And then I, ha I was spending a lot of time organizing the data myself. It was a nightmare. Uh, and so because what what most skip tracers out there do is they put everything on like a like a spreadsheet and then they go to all, all these websites and then they get multiple phone numbers and they put all those numbers in one specific cell. OK, so they don't separate them by column. They put them all on, on, a, on, a, on a cell and that makes it very difficult because you can't, you can't uh, import the data into the dialer like that. You have to separate them. So I spent, uh, believe it or not, I spent like six months trying to figure out a good skip tracing system because I was doing a lot of data. And then one day, you know, I asked, I asked Zeus, I said, hey, my, uh, my, my, my data is terrible. You know, do you guys skip tracing? He's like, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, how come you didn't tell me about this before? So, so now we just pretty much, you know, send send the list. I pull the list from PropStream and then send it to Virtual Ninja, and they they know what to do. I mean, I don't even have to give instructions. They just know what to do. <laughs> I don't yeah, do anything. Because, um, skip trace. Uh, PropStream they charge a lot for skip tracing. Uh, they mm. charge like twelve cents. Um, if if um they have promotion, but if they don't, it's uh, fifteen cents um batch leads i think it's about the same price or maybe a little bit higher um but you know data comes to data quality um i had um some clients who i returned their data because of those uh oh, i give yeah. it back it's not working it's not um it's not um giving us you know uh results 
Mm-hmm. No one is answering. We're not talking to anyone. So you need yeah, to have it time. skipped. Yeah, <laughs> yeah or wasting yeah. time. Here. Yeah, that's right. Um, it, I noticed something free people search and fast people search. Yeah, those are free. That's true. Uh, but the point here is that you need to have somebody to do that for you. Yeah, I mean, that's right. It's very time consuming. It's more yeah. it's it's uh, more time consuming than cold calling. Because mm-hmm. you need to search one by one. Um, you need to you need to copy and paste one by one. I think for 100, it's going to take you like an hour or two for 100 records. Yeah. Alone. Yeah. Yeah. And you need to you need to also organize them, like I was saying, in a, in a, in a good way. And then you have to train the VAs to do that. That, that it's it's a nightmare believe me you don't want to do your own skip tracing that is something that if you think you can go and skip trace your own stuff you're you're not going to get anywhere especially nowadays where your competitors already understand that like when i started skip tracing when i had those those skip tracers that was like six years ago and back then it was not as competitive as it is today today you have to have an edge and you have to be fast you know and if you're not dialing, if, if you're not having quality conversations with people, I mean, I've had deals that people literally I call, I'm about to write the offer, you know, and stuff. And then I call back, you know, to go over the offer and they've already gotten somebody else to, to, to uh, accept an offer from somebody else. You really need to move fast. It's a very fast paced uh, environment because people are not waiting around, you know, for, for, uh, for, for anybody. You know, first come, first service in this industry. So you got to be very, very proficient. You have to be wise how you're using your time and skip tracing. And like Zeus said, you know, yeah, you can sit there. You yourself, listen, you yourself can sit there and take a week, take a week and skip trace your list, right? You yourself as the operator, you can do that. Uh, but how much really is that costing you? Well, if... If Virtual Ninja or another skip tracer, you can pay them an hourly rate to do that. I mean, you can find somebody for $2 an hour. So instead of you wasting 40 hours in skip tracing your own list, you can hire somebody for three, $3 an hour to do it for you. So, so you can do, you know, two times, two or three times, you know, 40, 80 bucks. You can literally pay for skip tracing service so don't go don't don't think just because it's free it's not time free it is money free but it's not time free so use somebody else's time in real estate you have to get very good at utilizing other people's time and other people's money if you're using your own time and your own money you're wasting a lot of time you you literally are that's what this mastermind is all about i'll give you more on the of that mindset as we go along but to begin with, start thinking about other people's time. Don't use your own. Your own, you need to be making uh, or spending your time in money-making activities. Not only money-making activities, but the highest money-making activities. So if all you're doing is, is on the phone, just closing deals, so then you're getting paid you know, $1,000 an hour you know, because you're closing deals. So if you spent you know, 10 hours reaching out to people and so forth, you know, and then you close a deal and make 10 grand, you literally made a thousand dollars an hour. That's what you need to be doing. That's what I do. That's what I do. And Abby knows that, you know, we, we are, we are doing a lot of deals and stuff because they're sending us a lot of data. She knows exactly what I do. I'm very transparent with my business. So yeah, yeah, please, please, you guys, uh, just because it's free, don't think that it's not going to cost you your time. Let's see another question here. Um, if I did skip trace from PropStream, can I still redo skip trace? Yeah, yeah, I would say so. What do you guys think? Um, I sent a message. Um, since it's already skip traced, I mean, let's not raise money. Uh, we can make the phone calls on that. And then mm-hmm. if it's not working, then we can, yes, we skip trace it. But if it's going to work, then it's fine. Okay, Scott, so you don't have, to, you don't have money to, um, to do everything yourself. You have to do everything yourself. Uh, well, it's not, it's not, uh, real estate. That's one thing. I, I, I know there's a lot of people out there that they're teaching people to, you don't need any money to start. Uh, I will tell you, that's not true. <laughs> that is absolutely not true. You can't do that because you have to, you have to, th- there's no such thing as, as something for nothing. Uh, yeah. you have to spend some money, some money, if you're going to do this effectively. 
a lot of people have the mindset that, well, you know, I just need to get my, my first deal and then I'll reinvest that to, you know, to blow up the marketing. Let me, let me tell you, like my first deal, my very first deal that I did is I went, I went and I got a tax delinquent uh, list. And what I did is I hired, I hired a driver to go to all the addresses that cost me, I don't know, 150. If you cannot get a hold of $150, then, then, then you know that that's something that we can't fix here. But so I paid him $150 to go through every address because I narrowed down the, the, uh, the list. This is like a long time ago, like seven years ago, something, eight years ago, something like that. And, and I found a property and I bought it. It went through the auction and nobody purchased it. And so I bought it over the counter. Those properties, you can't do that nowadays. So don't take that strategy because you're going to waste time. A lot of people know about that now. So, so, uh, so what I did is I, um, I went to a friend of mine and, and I said, Hey, I found this property. I, I want to, I want to flip it. And I asked him for, 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 uh, an investment loan. And so he gave it to me. I asked him for 11 grand. Uh, no, actually 12 or 13, something like that. The property was 11,000. So when I bought it, I made $2,000 at the time of purchase. Okay. Then what I did is I immediately put it on, on uh, Craigslist. And, and I listed it for about 70 or 80,000, something like that. And people were bidding on it. I ended up selling it for 110. And uh, I, re I returned the money to my investor and he made a profit and I made a profit. Then I took that money and I continued to do the same thing. So, so that is a strategy you can use with what we're talking about. However, the marketplace is more competitive because the marketplace is more competitive. Now you're forced to spend money. Why? Because people are going to beat you to the, to, to, the, uh, to the punch every time. The only thing I would say that would beat that, that nobody else has that you have is driving for dollars. So if you drive for dollars and you don't want to use any money, Scott, this is what I would do, is you have to go door knocking. You just door knock. Because that we can't help you, you know, virtual ninjas can't help you is the only strategy that works today where you don't spend any money at all, but you're spending a lot of time. I would say wasting it, but you're spending a lot of time. You just door knock and, and look into farming on YouTube, say how to, how to farm an area for real estate. And all you're doing is you're door knocking and you're making connections. You're not asking people if they want to sell their house. You're just asking if they know of somebody in the neighborhood to sell their house. So door knocking is the only thing you can do for at no cost today. Uh, so, all right, um, Angela, it's very time consuming. Yeah, it is. Uh, Nancy, what causes me? Do you use bird dogs in other states if you want to invest in? Can they get a list for you? Um, I, I don't know. Uh, I mean, I know what you're saying, but I don't know if that is the best thing for you to start with. Uh, because using bird dogs, uh, you know, uh, bird dogs are going away uh, simply because information is so abundant people are not going to be working for you unless they see a big return because they can just look up you know wholesaling you know they'll just ask you okay so so i'm gonna go bird dog for you what do you do oh you know i buy houses and then i sell them i flip them or you know i wholesale them then they'll just do a quick google search and then they're like oh man i can do this myself so so it's not a good strategy anymore really to do bird dogs i know people used to talk about it all the time in my opinion using bird dogs is is um is not the best way to start does it work of course it works uh that's one thing that i always say any and every strategy i see on youtube it works it, it really does work but you have to stick to it the other thing is that people go from from coach to coach from video to video and that's what doesn't work. So what works is you got to stick with one person. Why? Because everybody's different. And you want to learn how somebody does something. 
So if you're going from one person to another, it's like going from one attorney to another. One attorney is going to tell you one thing and the other <laughs> attorney is going to say, well, that's wrong. Attorneys don't agree with one another. It, it, so, so if you're trying to find the expert coach or the expert strategy that, that just beats all others, you're not going to find it because it's somebody else's opinion. My opinion is going to be trumped by everybody else because they have their way of doing things. So if you're trying to learn real estate, you have to stick with one coach. And that's the one thing about this mastermind. It, it, I'm going to drive that home all the time because you're going to go look up something and then they're going to say, well, no, that's not the right way to do it. And then you're going to get confused. It's not the right way to do it because they don't do it that way. They found a different way. But I found a way that works for me. And that's the thing about learning is you have to find your own way. In order to do that is you have to stick to one specific thing. I sent you all that, that, that screenshot that says, you know, you hire two cold callers. You skip trace 10,000 numbers right now or 20,000. So 10,000 per, per caller. Uh, they call for about two, three months, and then you start doing deals. Then in those two, three months, you're following up. Your, your game is to follow up. That's what your job is. So there's two main things. You have a full-time cold call uh, person, and then you have a full-time job here. If you want to do five deals or between three to five deals a month, that's what you have to do. But you won't see those deals until like, you know, two, three months. That's the average. Now, there's people like some people that reached out to me. I gave them a few pointers and they already got deals under contract. I'm like, that's what I'm talking about. That's exactly what I'm saying. Because you got you to gotta stick with one strategy, one person. You go and you implement it and you do it and it works. Everything I've told you right now today in this training in the last, you know, 40 minutes should be enough for you guys to do a deal before the end of the year. Everything, everything. You send a list to, to, uh, to Abby today. They'll start dialing uh, on, on Tuesday. Uh, that's point number four she was making earlier. They work from Tuesday through Saturday because on the weekends, they want to have one day where they can get a hold of people. Mondays are typically very hectic for everybody. So why even bother people on Monday? Just you know, don't, 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 don't call on Mondays, call from Tuesday to Saturday. Then you have to think about calling, you know, in the mornings and the evenings, you know, outside of business hours during the weekdays. So, so please, uh, please don't, uh, don't hesitate in, in taking massive action. If you want to go slow, you can go slow. However, this is not the group to go slow. This is a group where you're going to come in and you're going to start doing deals. Now, if you do want to go slow, then I can help you with that, you know, but it won't, it won't be, I won't do a lot of training about that. And that will be just kind of doing deals with me and JVing with me. Uh, whether you find the deal or I find the deal, we can do them together. I'll go into that later. But right now we're talking about what the most effective way to get deals, which is cold calling, get under contract and dispo it. Very simple. Any questions from anybody? You guys feel free to unmute yourselves. Uh, oh. And as uh, we wrap it up here. Question. Uh, yeah, there's a question from Kristen. Um, is there a platform, either app or website for Virtual Ninja where the leads come coming back from our list, come back to us so we can view all in one place? Uh, we use uh, Google Spreadsheet on that. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to be making Google spreadsheet. If you don't have a CRM in place, uh, like Podio, uh, well, for, for long time investors, they normally use, um, CRMs, but if not, uh, for newbies or for starters, uh, we just use Google spreadsheet, uh, where you have access on it. Of course, that way you would know whenever we're putting data, um, it's going to be updated real time and you can check them real time as well. Mm -hmm. or yeah. um you can also um open up a podio account mm -hmm. uh, it's free it's free the first user is free so you just need to open it yourself send us a login uh details and then whenever we get a lead for you or the va uh we can put it in there so it's not gonna go anywhere and then when you you know 
company growth, then you can add users whatsoever, expand the CRM as well. Okay, okay. there's a question. Can I have me? Yep. Can you share that information again? I lost what you said. Um, Podio, the CRM. P O D I. Yeah, yeah, Podio. So that's the free one. The first user is free. And then if you're gonna add one or additional users, um, that's that's where they start to charge you. But other than that, it's a good um, way to start using CRM. Uh, we can just uh, set it up for you, like create a seller leads um, page or app. Uh, and then you can see it from there. We're, we're just gonna have the same login as yours. You're just gonna give that to us. Can we have a conversation you and I today sometime next week? Yeah, sure, sure, no problem. Um, I can send you a message later on today uh, on on Messenger, on Facebook. Um, so I think we have another question uh, from, um, is it Scott or what's No, it's not. It's not? Hold on. Okay. Um, okay. okay, it's it's from Kay. Okay, what if other members of this group submit the same listing? How was the sandal? Um, okay, so to answer that question, um, Kay, I just want to ask first, Ben, is are they all in Florida, this group? No, 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 no. Every, yeah, no just they're kidding. all throughout the country. Okay, but just in case, you know, um, uh, that happens. For example, uh, all of you are in Florida, targeting the same lists. If, if ever... For example, say Marion. Um, the list of Marion is uh, tax delinquency. Uh, the list of K is um, say tax delinquency as well. Now the VA of Marion uh, gets the lead. The name is A, the property address is the same. Mm -hmm. um, and then K gets the lead as well. Whoever, whoever goes first, you know, whoever get the lead first. For example, Miriam's VA get the lead first. Of course, we have submitted that to you and we know that K is also targeting the same list and we had the same lead, same address, same everything. We're not gonna submit that to K because that will duplicate, that will make you guys a competitor. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that will compete. Uh, instead, we're gonna get another lead for K that is with the different address. So we don't mm -hmm. wanna, have any conflict at all we were working with um we for example we have a lot of clients in maryland all of them are real estate friends and then, there's like six or seven of them some they're of them all are brothers yeah they're all baltimore <laughs> maryland wow some of them are brothers so we are managed to not submit uh same leads together because you know they're gonna like yeah. <laughs> compete with each other and we don't want yeah. that to happen Beautiful. It's all about data management, and you guys are really good uh, about that. Um, so we have another question. Um, how do other find their deals? They closed on. Um, I'm not sure how to answer this question. I think it's for you, Ben. How did other people find their deals? They closed on. Uh, they closed on. Um, let me see. Where is that question? Let me just. Uh, it's from Sarah. Oh, I think sure. the direct message. It went to my. Was oh, a direct message. Okay. Okay. Well, I have a. I have an answer actually. I have worked with the different um, investors before, so some of them, if they're not doing cold calling, um, they they have different types of marketing. They send postcards. They send. Um, they have um, bandit signs, if that's what they call it. Um, mm -hmm. they send mails. They they send. They do a lot of marketing. They also have websites. Uh, mm -hmm. landing pages you know um and all of those yeah mm -hmm. if it's not which, cold calling yeah which we're gonna go that's a great question uh there uh, sarah because uh what we're gonna go and go ahead and do in this group is i posted this early on and i'm glad you brought that up because i was not i was gonna skip over it uh which is in this group what we're going to do is we're starting to implement the most effective marketing uh, strategies first. And we're gonna go down the list. I, I think I posted when I initially started the group or the chat, I posted that I have about 257 strategies 
to get motivated seller leads. Uh, and at the top of that list is cold calling. But we are going to start doing the other stuff. We're going to go through cold calling. Then we're going to have a training about text messaging, which also Virtual Ninja does. Then we're going to have strategies about like uh, what Abby was mentioning, uh, the best way to do bandit signs and direct mail and stuff. We're going to go through SEO. I actually have a, have a degree in digital marketing. I went to FSU here in Florida uh, and I did uh, digital marketing. So I have a degree in that. And so SEO is something that I'm going to teach you guys how to do SEO on Google or for Google, how to do SEO for YouTube, how to do SEO for uh, uh, Bing and other search engines. DuckDuckGo is coming up uh, and how to make sure that your website comes up. You know, when somebody's typing, hey, how to sell my house without a realtor, you want that lead. So we're going to go. This is going to be a very, very uh, robust uh, program, but I am telling you the most effective thing to do is to cold call. Once you have a lot of data, we're going to take your data that it, it is already skip traced. It already has some email addresses on there. Then we're going to upload that data to a place like Facebook so that we can, instead of placing a call uh, to target that seller or sending a text message to that potential seller, we're going to show them an ad on social media. Then we're going to get into like into an ecosystem between Facebook, YouTube, Google, okay, mm -hmm. and other affiliate websites to where we upload your list and it targets them, okay, in every website that they go. We'll put a tracking, a tracking uh, uh, code on your website so that it tracks that person throughout uh, their activities online. So th that is going to be when we start talking about digital marketing. I'm, I'm really developing a, a, a mastermind to the full extent of the word because we're going to teach you 257 strategies to get, uh, to get motivated seller leads for your business. Uh, but I want you to start with cold calling because it teaches you everything that you need to know. If I, if I were to start with SEO, you would not understand, you know, how we can take the data from cold calling and apply it to SEO or PPC. But now you're seeing the data travel. Data travels through different, different funnels and you're targeting people at different stages and in different devices and with different medium, different channels. So we're going to go through that. Uh, then we're going to go through uh, the, the first recording that we had, I talked about B2B, B2C, B2G, which is government. So business to business, business to consumer, business to government. So we're going to go through a lot of training about how you go and connect with people that work for the government agencies, state, local, federal, etc. The mail, the mailman, stuff like that to get motivated seller leads. So make sure that you guys are always here. You're always involved. Uh, and that will be a great, great uh, time to, to tell you guys this is I don't want to have a group of 200, 300 people because this is free education for everybody. Uh, I ideally would like to have only five people who are killers who want to get deals. But, you know, we're going to keep it at 50, see how long we can do that. But I am going to teach you the best strategies to get motivated sellers, not only the paid strategies, but for free. Like SEO is going to be free for you guys. So I'm excited about that. But we're going to start with the most effective, which is cold calling. Any questions from anybody about that? Yeah, bandit signs are not allowed in my county. Yeah, they're banned in most, most, uh, most big cities. Uh, it, it, it goes by the city most of the time, but maybe the county did that. Did that. Uh, where are you at there, Nancy? Uh, but uh, most cities don't allow that because it's just a bunch of trash. You know, it makes the city look dirty and stuff. Uh, you don't need to, um, to do bandit signs. One strategy, I'll give you one thing right now that you might think it's ninja. I don't know. If you want to use bandit signs, they will not allow you to place them on a public street so what you need to do is you need to pull a list of vacant properties maybe a code violation uh, uh, list 
something that is dilapidated. And what you do is you put your sign on the yard of that house. You go and visit every address, put your sign there, and you say, I buy houses. You know what's going to happen? That's the owner is going to give you a call, and they're going to say, why are you putting your sign on my yard? Well, because I was trying to get a hold of you. We cold called you. We texted you. You never answered. But what also going to happen is other people are going to see it, and they're going to call you as well. So bandit signs work. You just have to know how to do it. And that's what I'm here for, to teach you guys. If you do that, what I just said, you'll get calls, guaranteed. Let's see. Oh, and Cali. Oh, yeah, California is going to be tough, 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 tough to do that. But you can still do the strategy I just described. So once we get our half warm leads a week, we share them with you, Ben, and talk about the strategy to bring that deal down. Uh, yeah, pretty much. We're gonna have we're gonna have sessions where we're gonna bring the deals, and I'm gonna jump on the phone and do some live calls with you guys to get that lead. Yeah, absolutely. We'll do all that stuff. Uh, I like the bandit sign and yard strategy. The owner may have other properties. That's correct. I'm gonna give you a bunch of ninja stuff here, you guys. Super cool cross-platform marketing social media with our lists. Yep. It is fantastic strategy. Question was for Ben as it relates to this group. How did our other mastermind people find their deals? Uh, it was just, um, I think, let me see. I think they were already calling. They were already calling. And... Uh, what I did is I got on the phone with a seller and it was just not, not even a big deal. I call, I call for a lot of sellers all the time or for a lot of students all the time. This is not my first group. I've been coaching for a long time. And so what I did is, is uh, somebody told me, Hey, I think I have a deal. Uh, and I said, how'd you get it? And they said, well, you know, I was calling around, I was pulling lists and stuff. And I didn't know if these were deals and stuff. So I look at the deals and I said, hey, that one is a deal. That one isn't a deal. And so I got on the phone with one of them and they got, they got, uh, they got a deal. So it's pretty much the same strategy, only they didn't start at the same time as, you know, we all have been, you know, trying to get you guys to pull your lists. They had already pulled the lists. So that strategy works. You pull a list and you cold call. I don't know if they were doing the cold calling themselves. I don't remember, but somebody did make the call, but they didn't know what to do after the seller said, yeah, I'd like to sell, <laughs> you know? So I just kind of coached them on how to do that. I hope that answers the question. Um, how about uh i think we got everybody's questions anybody has anything else you guys feel free to jump in and ask any questions without having to type them just talk most of my questions will be reflected with abby so i can figure out <coughs> but i do have one question for you abby do you um provide a list as well no we don't we don't provide lists because we have many clients and uh, the reason for that although we can the reason for that is we don't want them to think we're selling their lists yeah so we always direct them to other uh, uh, services or platforms who provide lists yeah, I did find why well, I had one come to me and, ask, and saying they do that. That's how I was wondering, but that's great. I understand your purpose. Yeah. 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 The, the, the list, uh, the list pulling is the, is the best skill that you can have uh, in, in knowing who you want to target. Uh, I guess I'm trying to think about uh, what else I can give you uh, because I have been doing this for a long time and I apologize because we move so fast through some habits that we've developed now that this is, we pull a list, we skip trace it, we send it. 
but I know how to pull lists. So let's talk about the types of lists uh, to pull. Maybe that will help you guys uh, and will prompt you to ask me more questions about that. So if I were to start right now, what is my fastest way to, to a deal? What list should I pull? Uh, would that help you guys? Let me know. I can go through that and break it down very, very, uh, like to the nitty gritty of it. So put on the, on the, on the chat there if, if you don't want to talk. Um, so, okay, good, good. So I would, one thing, and you wouldn't know this, you wouldn't know this unless you, okay, Vicky, okay, I, I see you. I wasn't checking my phone. Provide your step-by-step -step process. Of course, of course, I could do that. That's what this, that's what this uh, whole meeting today is. I want to make sure that you guys, that I answer every single question. I don't want you to leave this meeting and, uh, and have questions. I want to ask them all here, so please um, answer them here, so please ask them right now. Um, so there is one thing that is missing from every video that I see out there about how to get started. And that is, they start at the beginning. In real estate, you can't start at the beginning. <laughs> you have to start with the end. If you're an investor, you got to know what you're trying to achieve. So are we trying to wholesale properties? Are we trying to buy and hold? Are we trying to flip? Are we trying to do Airbnbs? Are we trying to do, you know, subject to, which is my favorite. I mean, I do a, I do a ton of uh, subject to deals. Uh, as a matter of fact, we just had a conversation with Abby about, uh, hey, I want to do more subject to deals. So uh, subject to is when you take over payments, somebody needs to move, uh, needs to get rid of their property. They have a beautiful, amazing mortgage uh, loan from the last you know, 10 years when rates have been so low at uh, you know, 2, 3, 4%. I can take over those payments, put a tenant in that property, and then cash flow it. So, Sarah, that 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 goes for you because you know you you need to uh, you already have properties. So, sub two would be a fantastic way for you to keep acquiring these properties without having to come up with cash to actually buy them. Um, so, because uh, that's everybody's goal, people want to get money so they can start putting that money into real estate. But you don't have to do that. You can go straight into building wealth, which is creative financing. Uh, I don't know, and I am grateful that most gurus out there don't teach about that because then the the, the market would be truly saturated, truly saturated. So the end in mind will be one of two things: Are you going to buy it and keep it? Or you're gonna buy it and flip it, right? That's the only thing. Do you keep it or do you flip it? That's it. So answer that question first. If you're going to flip it, if you're going to flip it, then you have to get a significant discount, significant discount, because you can either wholesale it or buy it yourself and flip it, or do an ovation agreement. We can get into that later. Or do one of one of those strategies to where you're gonna buy it, hold it for a uh, small period of time, whether the property or the paperwork or both, right? And then you're going to either assign that contract or you're going to resell the property. So, so what is the end? Most people want to do wholesaling. So type it in the chat there and, and tell me so I can kind of adjust my answer. What are you looking to do? Wholesale, buy and hold, uh, buy and flip yourself. So type it on there so I can see. But as we go through the process, so I would have to answer that question for myself at the beginning, wholesale and sub two, perfect. Uh, and, uh, and the answer to that question is it determines the type of list I'm going to pull. So now most people will try to do wholesaling. So let's stick with wholesaling there for a second. So wholesaling is going to be more difficult if there is somebody living in the house. 
okay? Uh, and it's even gonna be more difficult if the owner is living in the house. That's gonna be difficult because they'll say, well, yeah, I'd like to sell it and I need to sell it quick, but where am I gonna live next? You know? So, but if the house is either vacant and in need of repairs, those are the super amazing wholesale deals. So I just gave you that uh, a little data there is if the property is vacant, that's going to be good. If further the property is vacant and the owner lives far away from that property, then the deal gets sweeter and sweeter and sweeter. So you're, you're targeting absentee owners. You know, that's what I would want. That's what I would do if I started today. I would do absentee owners that live far from the property. Whether, you know, I would probably do, PropStream has this beautiful thing on there where, you know, you can pull people, a list of people, absentee owners who don't live in the county. That's the, that's the list I would pull. Um, now, you can, you can do that. And then start adding different things on top of it. So stack more pain on top of it. So if they have, they have, for example, a divorce, you know, uh, and it's vacant and they don't live in the county, they're going to pretty much give, give that property away pretty much. Uh, if they have a code violation, the property is vacant and they don't live in the county, they will give that property away, okay? Uh, also, make sure that you, are, that you are pulling people who are not a corporation. PropStream does that, does that uh, with the click of a button. So you select, you select uh, corporate owned or not corporate owned. So you wanna select that not corporate owned. Uh, and that's pretty much it. That's what, I want that list to be big. Why? Because I need to give Abby, you know, 10,000 people. <laughs> so as long as the property is vacant and has a code violation and the owner doesn't live in the county, that's going to be a fantastic list for me to pull. Now, if you want to drill down into other types of people, then we can talk about other exit strategies that you're thinking. But in the meantime, those are going to be fantastic wholesale deals. Now, let's talk about sub two because I saw sub two also. Uh, so if I was going to do sub two, it, it, the answer is obvious. I mean, let's target uh, people on PropStream who have a mortgage. You can, I think PropStream gives you the ability to target mortgages that are under 5% uh, uh, interest, interest rate. So you target that and you target everybody that bought a house, you know, probably five years or more five years or longer. And, uh, and then, so you do that five years or, or longer. Uh, if I was going to do sub two, I would also try to do lease options. And I know these, these strategies, you guys are, you know, you're going to become more and more familiar with these strategies, but at the beginning, I'm just giving you the very, very basics. Uh, so, so don't, don't think that you need to have those, questions answered today just 30,000 foot view here if I want to do sub two I want to find somebody that can either sell me the house or rent it to me for a short period of time and then buy it so that's called lease with an option to buy okay so so what you do is you pull a list of people who have some potential pain so target mortgages that are below 5%, that will be your first filter on PropStream. Then you target people who, uh, then to that, you add people who probably might be going through a divorce. Uh, or instead of that, you can replace that filter by, by targeting people who, who are, if they're absentee and they have that mortgage, man, that's going to be fantastic. And if the property is vacant as well. So I always like to go back to vacant because it's easier to transact. They're not living there and no one else is living there. 
So if you wanted to just go straight one list that can give you good wholesale potential properties or good wholesale or sub two or lease options, just target everybody that's vacant. Any property that's vacant, just, just, that's what I used to do when I started. I used to just do only the vacant, the vacant list. I would just do vacant, 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 left and right. Property had to be owned more than, uh, I think, two years is what I was targeting just to avoid investors who just bought it and they're re rehabbing it and therefore the property is vacant, stuff like that. So uh, uh, I would do two years or, or more ownership and the property is vacant. I would do that. If you guys pull that, that's going to be a good list. Okay. Any? Did I lose anybody there? Please tell me right now because uh, I have, listen, I, I'll be here until you guys don't have any more questions. I want you guys to really, really be super clear. Just to Take advantage of this. Thing, uh, ben, the last portion you mentioned, uh, two years, and vacant. What was that for? The sub two years and vacant. Uh, that would be for either wholesale or sub two. Okay. And I just wanted to ask if you have Somebody's asking something. I heard somebody said that they wanted to ask me something, but I couldn't hear. Nothing. Okay. okay. All right. I'm going to go down the line here because I know you guys were posting a lot last night and I want to clear up all the doubts here. So, uh, Miss Vicky, you are in California, if I remember correctly. What, how, what can I do today to make sure that you are doing deals? What questions do you have? Vicky, you're muted, if you can hear me. Nothing, nothing, okay. Let's move on to Sarah. Sarah, what questions do you have, Sarah? Pretend you, you we're on the phone. I asked a lot in the chat and you've been answering them, so it's great. You're good now? Yeah. Tell us I, about the I feel like I blew have. my wad though on my 10,000 list. I did it really quick this morning and I didn't, I used the parameters you sent me last night, absentee, five-year ownership. Um, I didn't do vacant, but I, you know, whatever. Um, maybe hey. there's another way to close those deals. Who knows? Yeah. You know, it could be a tenant and they might just want to like, yeah, they're just... bored <laughs> being a landlord. I don't, I don't know. Um, yeah, there is. to close those mm -hmm. yeah deals. yeah yeah the motivation listen um i'm gonna tell you guys we're gonna get into some ninja strategies coming up soon where we don't even have to buy the houses cheap <laughs> literally you know we can buy a house for market retail value today with the right terms for you know for long-term buy and hold which is what you're looking for sarah so so you're going to be you're going to be probably swooning over the strategies i'm going to teach you about that because you don't have to do wholesaling all you need is a good cold caller that can find you people who want to sell and if well, somebody has the i don't have down sell, payment money say again? I, I don't have down payment money you don't need any down payment money I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example. Uh, be, be, you're a little bit more advanced. So I had, I had a, a, a property that I wanted to buy and I contact, it was listed on the market and I contacted the real estate agent. Uh, and, and the reason why is because it was on one of my, my lists and I looked at the location and I'm like, man, this is, this is a great area. I want to buy this house. So I, I, I called the, the the seller first and the seller said yeah yeah this is you know I, I, i'm moving out of town something like that so anyway so i called the agent and i said hey i want to use you to buy this house because i wanted to save time and so i told um i told the agent i said hey can you you know the house is listed for um i think it was listed for three hundred thousand uh, so let's assume that 
So I made an offer. I said, hey, can you submit an offer for uh, 200,000? Uh, and, and, and right off the bat, the, uh, if, you're, if your offer, your wholesale offer, it doesn't embarrass you, then you're offering too much. Remember that. So it did embarrass me. And, and, and the agent said, uh, he says you're crazy. He, <laughs> he, he won't accept that. I said, okay. So <laughs> what do you think he'll accept? He's like, he's not budging. 300000 that's that's what he wants i said okay so go back to him and say i'll give him the 300 it was a free and clear property okay uh i said uh 300 with uh with seller financing and uh but it's a full asking price offer 300 000, but he's got to finance the property 100 percent. and he said Again, he says that you're crazy. He's not going to do that. <laughs> I said, okay, offer him 340000 Again, seller financing, nothing down. Uh, and he says, he'll take your 360000 And still, he says, you're crazy. He's not going to finance you. <laughs> I said, okay, offer him 400000 zero down, 0% interest. And he says, he's thinking about it. I said, okay, give him my final offer is 410, zero down, 0%. Zero and he says, he'll take it. So I overpaid by $110,000. Why? Because I know that property over 30 years is going to be worth how much? Two and a half times minimum what it was worth when I bought it, 300000 So I know I'm going to have a million dollar property in 30 years or pretty close so who got he's probably he was probably thinking what an idiot buyer and i'm thinking what an idiot seller <laughs> you're gonna like that strategy uh there sarah because i i didn't spend any money i don't like paying for anything i don't like putting my own money into real estate because i don't have to and that's why I created this mastermind because you guys can do that too. So always overpay. What is your limit? Well, your limit is, you know, if you get a 30, a 30 year loan, the bank knows this. So, you, you know, you see evidence of this all the time. They'll give you a loan on a property. Let, let's take the same example you buy. So if you go to the bank or well, let's say I had gone to the bank and gotten a third, a $300,000 loan the bank will give me that loan, but they have to amortize it, right? So over 30 years. So the bank says over the first 15 years, you have to pay the majority of the interest. So what happens is the bank is very smart because they want you to pay the interest first. Then you start paying towards the principal. After year 10, you start you know, paying a lot more uh, toward principal. By year 15, you're paying a lot more, so, so, and so on. Over, over 30 years, you know, you'll pay you know, the $300,000 back plus the interest, okay? And what is that interest? Typically, the bank wants you to pay two and a half times or more the money they lent you. So over 30 years, you would have paid for that $300,000 house close to $900,000, so that's what everybody does in this country. I don't know it, why people have not realized that the bank is, you know, making out like a bandit, but they are. You are overpaying by two and a half times minimum for that mortgage. So I'm just saying, you know what? Why pay the bank? <laughs> why can't we just do this peer to peer where you can structure deals to where the seller can be the bank and I can be the bank too, because that property is going to be rented out. So we are sharing in the, in the portion that the bank was making the majority of their money. I'm sharing that with the seller. So what's my limit? How, mu how much can I, can I offer? So if the seller gave me 45 years seller financing, I can give him up to you know, $600,000 for that house today. A $300,000 house. Why? Because now I got 45 years seller financing. I can do that all day. So... I can do, I can do, if somebody wanted a million dollars, I can do a million dollars for a $300,000 house. 
as long as they give me a hundred years to pay it, I can do a million dollars. That's for sure. So this mastermind is going to help you understand these things, these concepts, but it's too early right now for you guys to do. I need you guys to start with the basics, which is talking to sellers, making offers, getting deals wrapped up, making quick cash via wholesale. As you move down that, that, uh, that trajectory, then you'll start implementing some of these things that I'm telling you. Then they're going to click in your mind because you're going to come across a seller that, yeah, they have urgency to sell it because, you know, they, they have something with the IRS where it needs to get out of their name, right? So they don't need the cash right now. Uh, I'll give you another example. I had somebody in Jacksonville. Uh, she, she got a divorce. Uh, they, they used to have, um, as a couple, they used to have rentals, like five or something. Uh, and the judge awarded her two or three. She had sold the first ones. And then the property that I found, I found it because I was doing a flip down the street. So I was driving and I saw this vacant property. I looked through the windows and stuff. And, um, and I'm like, man, somebody was doing a rehab. And it looks like it's been a long time since they've, they've been here. And you can tell because there's newspaper in the driveway, it's old and stuff like, and you can see that there's, there's no evidence of people going in, in and out the house. So I went ahead and I took that address and I, and I skip traced it, had my cold caller at the time, call them. And she said, yeah, I've been thinking about selling it, but I hadn't you know, gotten around to it. And I said, Hey, can you meet me at the house? She did. Uh, she came to the house. And I said, what do you want for it? And she goes, well, I'll take, I'll take 80. And I said, is that, is that, is that the best you can do? And she says, yeah, maybe I might discount it or whatever. I said, okay, I'm going to send you the, the, the contract and, you know, sign it. I sent the contract for 50 and she signed it, <laughs> but 80 was good, but I sent the contract for 50. So when, when we were working on the paperwork, I said, what are you going to do with the money? Because uh, you have a nice house. We, I had met her at her house to do a couple things for the paperwork and stuff. So I saw that she had a nice house. And I said, and I said what are you going to do with the money? And she says, she says, nothing. I'm just going to put it in my bank account. So I said, how about uh, I'll give you the 80 that we had agreed if you finance the property for me? And she says, are you putting anything down? And I said, no. I said, so when do I get paid? I said, I'm going to flip that house. So you'll get, you'll get paid within six months. And she says, 80 in six months? I said, yeah. So she said, yes. I went, I, I got a loan to flip the house and we flipped it. And, uh, and I sold the house uh, and then she got paid. She got paid 80,000. I sold that house for 300 something. Uh, so she got paid. I didn't care. I didn't spend any of my own money. I actually lost uh, materials. The contractor that was with me, he got a little shady, which is another problem when you flip. You have to manage contractors. Uh, he actually came in and stole some of the materials, actually most of them. So I had to pay for materials twice. And that was my mistake. I'm not afraid to, uh, uh, to uh, admit my mistakes, but uh, I still made pretty good money uh, on that house. So we're going to talk about a lot of creative things, but that came still the same process, cold call, you know, negotiation, contract, either flip it or wholesale it. It's the same, same process. You have to get good at talking to people on the phones. That's the number one skill that we need. So Sarah, I appreciate your input. Hopefully I was able to, to give you a little bit uh, more of an idea what we're going to be talking about as advanced strategies because you're a little bit more advanced uh, than somebody who's never bought a property before. Uh, let's go to uh, Nancy. Can you hear me, Nancy? Nancy, no, okay. Uh, Miriam, let's go back to you. I'm just going up the list. Hello. Talk to me. Talk to me, talk to me. You got me, you got all my attention. <laughs> so, um, as I have mentioned to you, wholesaling will be my, my, my start. I wanna build capital. Um, 
I need the help. And that's why I've been um, talking about trying to find answers in the chats. It's been really hard because while I'm working, a lot of questions, a lot of flips. And then, you know, the conversation starts from one end and you got to find in the bottom. You're like, oh my God, I'm so lost. What's going on? So I just stopped. Mm -hmm. But I think that now, that I'm, because I was confused, I didn't know, uh, I thought Abby just did skip tracing. I didn't know she uh, was also part of the uh, VA Ninja, which I did um, have a contact with via email. Um, but I'm glad I didn't send my list because, you know, as I mentioned, I just started the private prop screen because I was waiting to see. Um, now, I did go to an REI about two weeks ago in Miami, and there's a guy out there who oh. had a... Um, uh, a uh, software that is just for Florida. He added, I think, five other states on there. But his web web uh, software uh, apparently catches all the off markets before anyone else in the other softwares. Mm -hmm. it costs two hundred something dollars a month. So I didn't know which way to go with what software. I joined the Wholesale with PopStream group. This is how I came across you, which I'm so happy I did. And um, Thank you. I said, let me start PropStream. So they only allowed, I think, 50 uh, total on the trial. I come up to the uh, actual account, I think, tomorrow. So I want to start pulling the max. Um, so I, I said, okay, I'm glad this was happening today. Uh, I think a lot of people were pending. Uh, earlier in the week but um now that i know that abby is in with the va group and all i want to have a conversation with her so i know which uh, way to go financially on how to get started because i want to get started as aggressive as i can beautiful so my one question the things you might know i mean i don't i did a one week uh, women uh, real estate networking uh, training that uh, talked about all the different exit strategies. Um, it gives you a little bit of each. And sub two was one, but again, as I said, I want to start my capital with wholesale. Um, do you want us to only get off market list? Yes. Yes, only off market. Uh, if you're going to do wholesale, it, it's got to be off market. Um, well, it doesn't have to be. I'll take that back. It doesn't have to be, but you should start learning how to do off market uh, because it's a, it's a really nice skill to have to know where to find the deals. So yeah, I would recommend let's only do focus at the beginning on off market uh, and, and be very, very aggressive. Like you're saying, I am right here right now. I'm in Aventura, as I was telling you. And uh, so, so you and I can, can really tag team a lot I'm going to be traveling. I'm going to Colorado next week, uh, but I'm driving back and I should be back in here in Miami area uh, by a week from tomorrow, hopefully. Uh, so, so that's going to be good um, because I'm restructuring things in my personal life, et cetera. So that I'm going to be on the road a lot more. Uh, you guys will probably see me more from my phone and stuff and looking at deals and, and things of that nature. Uh, and, and, and with you there, um, being, wh where are you located again? At? I'm in Delray, Delray beach, which is about, uh, 45 minutes from you. 45 minutes. I mean, we can cover, we can, <laughs> we can cover all of Broward and, and Miami Dade and we can do Monroe. Uh, we can do West Palm. Palm uh, beach. Yeah. Palm. Yeah. Palm beach. And what so. Is, what is your thought on the West side where hurricane eon hit where there's a lot of uh distressed properties uh i want to be aggressive there as well i want to be very very aggressive uh in that area we need to we need to um to get a focus on the on the taxes there so 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 start i'll start uh talking more about tax delinquencies and tax lien properties etc because I bet you mo a lot of people are not going to pay their taxes that, that, that are due right now because they have this damage. So you can get a lot of properties uh, doing it you that way. That size, so I know the area really well. Oh, do you? Okay. Fantastic. Fantastic. How far, how far, um, how far are you from, 
let's say Fort Myers? Fort Myers is about two hours. Two hours, yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you and I are going to be working together. I got your phone number. I apologize. I haven't been able to call you. <laughs> I've been a little <laughs> bit busy. <laughs> okay, I know. I mean, I work, as you know, I work as a nurse and I work from home, but it's sometimes very restricted. So usually mm -hmm. I don't have a chance to do anything until after five. Um, I try to a balanced life. So I have to go work out after work because uh, the stress needs oh, to go in another direction. Um, but I do try to focus a lot as much as I can on extra time, even early in the morning or late in the evening to do. I do have a couple other groups that I'm in that I do Zoom classes during the week, but I'm all in for it. Um, I really, really do need to talk to Abby so I can get a, a good financial plan going to, into the assistance on our part. I think once I get that on, we'll be able to do a lot together. Yeah, for sure. And you have me here. So, so yeah, we're going to do, uh, it's a little bit of an exception with, with you and, and me versus me and other people, except if they do virtual wholesaling, uh, because we can be more involved. We can work more closely together. Uh, so if you guys, if you guys send me a message, if you guys want to do virtual wholesaling, or if you want to do deals in Florida, because Florida is near and dear to my heart and we can come up with a different strategy. I know somebody was saying that they're switching to virtual wholesaling or Florida specifically. They weren't from here. I think Scott said that. I can't remember. Um, so, uh, so if you guys want to do deals in Florida, uh, you let me know because uh, Florida is a great state, extremely competitive. I mean, I'm talking like really competitive, uh, but we can take an edge. I think if you're a newbie and and you want to start doing deals in Florida, you have to bring your A game. You really have to have a solid, solid coach, uh, a solid group. And I'm not the coach, by the way. I don't want you to think of me as a coach. The group is the coach, you know, so I'm a, I might be a part of the coach. You know, Abby is doing part of the coaching, you know, it, it, like we're doing today. So just we're putting our experiences together and stuff so that we can have a, a solid foundation to do deals and do them aggressively. So I want you guys to know that. Mentioning uh, virtual, uh, I'm also interested in that. You, you and I can discuss that. But um, what's your take, even locally, do you feel that working these properties will need to be the homes or we'd be able to do this virtually as well? locally yeah you can you can do them uh virtually uh even them being local uh for example in jacksonville jacksonville is a city that i know very well most of my deals have been in jacksonville uh and so i can tell you pretty much without seeing the house uh if a deal Hi. is good or not because i know the areas if you are doing virtual wholesaling uh, you need you need to to learn the market. In order to do that, you have to have some boots on the ground initially, teach you some things about the market. But once you know your market, you, you can do everything virtually. Once you know the good areas, the bad areas. And there are tools out there that can help you with that, uh, such as Privy. Privy, pre, uh, Privy is... P R I V I privy.com. Uh, and that is something where you can go on there and you can figure out the subject property and what investors are doing in a certain radius. So, okay. So, sorry about that. So, um, the, um, the virtual game has has uh, increased because of the pandemic uh so people are more open to doing to doing um uh docu signs and things like that which is going to be very heavy uh one of the things that we do uh so so yeah yeah we can do that definitely there okay how do you pronounce your name marianne uh you can call me mimi that's my nickname mimi, mimi but miriam yeah mm -hmm. miriam. Oh. okay what else do you have? Um, that's pretty much it for now. Um, I'm hoping that by next year, January, um, I will be structured into a new job. Uh, that's in the plan. That'll give me more uh, flexibility to mm -hmm. work on the business aspect. 
So that's uh, hopefully the goal for the end of January to start. Um, just waiting on that to be confirmed. That'll free me up. That'll free me up quite a bit. Oh, great, great. Yeah. Well, that's good. I'm looking forward to working with you here uh, locally in, in, in uh, these counties. Uh, with that being said, uh, Abby, since I got you on here, um, I need to... <laughs> Are, are, are we working on something down here in uh, Broward and in, in, uh, Miami with Ed or anything like that? I think so. Um, the so? Okay. link that I sent in, um, it's a mix of um, all over Florida. I did not filter it to just um, Jacksonville or just Orlando. Um, oh, I sent it about okay. like around uh, more than 100, 200, 300 or 500 okay, actually. Good, good. Okay. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah, because uh, I'm, I'm heavily, heavily uh, going to start doing deals here. So, okay. Fantastic. Appreciate it. Any, any comments that you have right now, uh, Abby, or anything? Broward, in the Broward area, um, known at really well, um, Hollywood, um, West Side, uh, Broward, uh, those areas are um, good areas looking. Oh, sweet. Okay. Okay. Yep. Uh, ben, I want, just, just wanted to add something before we wrap up here. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So we have one question from Sarah. Do you text before calling? So um, Sarah, um, texting is, um, I'd say it's, it's, uh, it's, it's up to you. Uh, we have some clients. We have some clients who does texting and calling at the same time. Um, we have clients who only do cold calling. We have clients who only do texting. So if you want to customize it that way, that's fine. Um, but the caller is not the one who's doing a text messaging. We, we, we do it that way because um, there are people who cannot be on the phone, but they are really fast when it comes to texting. So um, we have those kind of people. We also have those kind of people who are really Ooh, good at calling, biscuit. but yeah, they want don't biscuit. want to um, but they don't want to like do the admin works or do the texting or non voice yeah, works. I want it. Mm -hmm. That's Vicky. Oh. Vicky, hold on. Okay, there we go. Go ahead. <laughs> okay, and also another thing is that um, for those who want to get started, um, you see, I'm not forcing anyone to to like sign up or whatever, um, as I have not been that active on the group. It's just that whenever someone mentioned me, I just. Um, you know, jump right in. But if you want to get started, you need to let us know advance, like a um, few days ahead. So for example, today is Saturday. Today is our last day of work. Uh, we're going to have a day off, two days. And then we will go back to the office on Tuesday. So if you want to get started Tuesday, let us know before Tuesday. Um, and then um, our process is you send us a list, skip traced or not. If you want us to do the skip tracing, please do it in advance as well. So um, you're giving us time to do the skip tracing. But if the list is already skip traced, um, I believe that is Sarah who sent me a skip traced list. Um, we can, we, and then Miriam too, yeah. Uh, we can have that upload into the dialer. So first is the list, the skip trace or not. And then we process it, we upload it to the dialer. And then once it, it is uploaded to the dialer, you'll receive an email from your VA or your caller that they are starting their day. So let you know. Um, mm -hmm. And then you can yeah. um, you can communicate with your caller uh, on a daily basis. We use Skype for communication. Um, and you'll receive daily reports of what happened during the day. Leads, if as I've said, if you have CRM in place, we put it in there. If not, we use Google Spreadsheets. Um, all the notes that you need is going to be there. So um, I think Ben will, will cover the acquisitions part uh, side of the business, mm -hmm. which you can do. Yeah. Because you're not going to do that a lot. Because um, as Ben said, you also need to spend time, you know, um, doing the deals. So that's your part. Yeah. So we will pre-qualify. We oh. will gather all the information that is needed. Uh, Vicky is back. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Yeah, we will gather all the information that we need to know, or you need to, you need to, whenever you call. So it's like yeah. giving you um a weapon before the battle, something. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, that's that's correct. Uh -huh. yeah. And and then then with our service, just to let you know, to those who wants to get started, um, we charge a week ahead. Uh, we charge a week ahead. For example, uh, you're gonna hire someone for 20 hours. Um, you need to take care of that before we even get started. Uh, because mm -hmm. the dialer is free, all other tools is free. Um, we need to spend on that before we can use that. Um, and yeah. that's it. We don't, we're not gonna tie you up into a contract or something. Um, if you wanna try stuff for a week or two, that's fine. Um, and uh, most of them were very confident that, you know, the client stays. And uh, most of our clients are actually referrals uh, because I think Ooh. they're happy with the service. So they are referring mm -hmm. friends. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm not going to say 100%, yeah. but that's, yeah, they are referring. So that means they're happy. Um, I'm, re I'm referring yeah. you guys to, uh, to Abby right now because <laughs> she is the best. <laughs> I, I want to show you guys my phone. I, I want you to see, uh, Abby was touching on, on how uh, we get the, uh, we get the, uh, the emails. Uh, so the last lead, what is today's date? The 7th, no, I'm sorry, the 10th. So I want you to see here, these are all my leads I've been getting this week. I don't know if you guys can see them. So they come like this. I want you to see a huge list. It goes on and on and on and on. These are all the, the, the lists that I've been, uh, uh, the leads. Um, so that is from the caller um, that he yeah. is receiving, receiving on a daily basis, uh, which is the end of the report. Um, mm -hmm. And aside from that, uh, as I've said, we can use the CRM, which is Podio, if you want to go free. Uh, if you have a different CRM, um, don't worry, we're very tech savvy. We can surely navigate on that. Uh, yeah. if you want to, if you want to use like um, a not complicated kind of thing and it's free, we can use Google Spreadsheet. Everything is in there. You don't have to like click any any other things. Yeah, here here's so a report. Your... Here's a report, real enough. quick, you guys. Uh, I don't know if you can see it. I get. Um, I get the number of, of calls that uh, it says answering machine. And the next one says no answer. Callbacks, disconnected numbers, do not calls. Uh, so I get, I get a report like that uh, every day. Every day I, I get to see. And then below, I'm getting my leads here. You can see Mr. Uh, Je Jeremy Hill. This is... Uh, uh he is he's looking oh this is this is a different thing he's uh yeah this this is a different a different uh diff I, I asked abby to send me different reports i i like to connect with uh with buyers as well so i'm asking them to send me anything and everything that is where i can uh network with people i like to network as you guys can see because uh, these are my buyers, so you're always building your cash buyers list. Uh, that is timely because I didn't talk to you guys about cash buyers. Uh, the way to get cash buyers is, is super simple uh, because if you get a, a good deal, you'll find a buyer right away. What makes it a good deal? Uh, in this market, 60 cents on the dollar or less is a fantastic deal. You'll get plenty of buyers. Uh, but another good source to find buyers, if you can't get a deal for 60 cents on the dollar or less, then you're going to have to depend on people who want to buy a deal uh, long term who are not professional you know, flippers or something like that. So who may have one or two properties or something. And you can get those through PropStream as well. So we, we will pull lists for cash buyers as well. So that's a little bit of a uh, insight, but we'll get into that once we start getting deals. So any other questions? Vicky, I know, did you want to ask a question? No. Okay. Angela, talk to me. 
Angela, Angela, Angela. Hey, Ben. How you doing? Talk to me. Good. How are you? Good. Good. <laughs> what you got going on? Oh, there you go, Vicky. You you are. I'll unmute you here in a, a little bit. Um, what what do you have going on? You have lists. What uh, what are you working on? Well, we had a well, I have a contract sign, and I told you that. So mm -hmm. the seller, because uh, like in our contract, we ask that you remove it from Zillow, so we don't have no conflict with any other buyers. You know, we just try to make the process easy as possible. So mm -hmm. he, he had removed it, and then he put it back, and then he oh, put wow. it back for twenty k more. Oh. So I'm in the process of probably canceling it with him because we, okay, we got the deal. Well, okay, hold on. So the ARV that we found on the flip comps, you know how you go on prom stream and have the comparables? Mm -hmm. The first one you see is, is not really much around there, but like the first one that sticks out is 275000 mm. So... My VA, she went under flip comps and it was 474000 Oh, wow. Okay. So we have a, we had a lot of that for like two ninety. dollars mm -hmm. She was asking for like three hundred, dollars So we had a lot of that for two ninety. dollars But when we're sending it to people, <laughs> I guess they're like, no, it's not worth it they're not seeing i guess the 474 un under the flip comp and they're seeing mm -hmm. the 275 yeah yeah <laughs> yeah so, no it that happens a lot yeah one one thing about uh real estate is you never ever ever stop learning uh, right. I, that's why I, you know, I never want to be referred to as a coach, a mentor or anything like that, even though people do that, because I really don't consider myself somebody that has, yeah, or say a different way. Mm -hmm. I still have a lot to learn. I, mm -hmm. I'm just like you guys. I'm studying constantly. I'm trying to understand certain things, but in that example that you just gave, mm -hmm. it reminded me of when I started doing wholesaling, I, I started doing flips. When I, when I got into real estate, I was flipping. I was flipping a lot. Uh, and uh, I was buying a lot of tax deeds that, that I was rehabbing myself. I was closing on them and fixing them and selling them. That's how I started. So when I started doing wholesaling and other strategies, I already had a lot of knowledge because I started with that. And I had a lot of guts. You know, when you flip, you, you, you have to have a lot of guts. So, so wholesaling is a safe place to start, but it doesn't force you to learn a lot of things. So what you do is, for example, with this deal you're describing, back then I used to rely on the hard money lenders. So I had a strategy I want to give to you guys. Maybe it might help you. When I had a deal, what I did is I tried to get a loan on it. I would send it to hard money lenders and I would say, Hey, um, I need a loan on this property. You know, I avoided anybody that would tell me that they would tell me, give me their assessment on their deal unless I, I, I filled out the, their paperwork. Uh, I just wanted them, that was my strategy to have them teach me the game because they would look at the deal and they would say, hey, this is not a deal. And I'm like, okay, tell me why. And they'll be like, well, because of this, because of that. Come on, Ben, you know the game. You know, you, you can't take this property right here and, and compare it to this property that you have because it's not the same class. Look at the year built, look at, but I'm like, they're right next to one another. And he's like, but, but the same developer didn't build the two houses. They were built completely different. And that's when I understood. I'm like, oh, so that's why it's not the same house. I got you. I got you. You know, so one can be, I mean, they can be back to back, but they're divided by, you know, um, an imaginary uh, railroad track because they're just different, different properties. Uh, and so I learned a lot of real estate from those questions I would ask the hard money lenders. So even if you're going virtual, it's a good idea 
to talk to a hard money lender and ask him to tell you if they will loan on that property. Hey, if I were to buy this property, how much could you lend me to buy this property? That right there instantly fixes all of your problems with real estate. Hard money lenders are experienced wholesalers. They're experienced flippers. They're experienced capital raisers. They're exper they, they have all kinds of experience in real estate. Otherwise, they would not be a hard money lender. They have to. They have to evaluate the, the deal based on risk, based on risk only. And if they think you have a good deal, they will tell you. And, and not only that, but if, you, if they think that, that you have a good deal, you can turn around and say, hey, uh, actually, would you buy this deal? And a lot of them will say, heck, yeah, I'll buy it. You know, they yeah. will tell you, like literally, that they'll buy it right then and there. Or they know the actual buyers because they're lending uh, to the actual buyers, the flippers. So never, ever, ever underestimate the, the people that control the industry for the most part are the, the lenders, the hard money lenders and other people that lend for flips, et cetera. Those are the people that are really, really working very close with wholesalers. So, so I would say analyze, send your deal to like five hard money lenders and they will tell you what's wrong. I can't tell you right now because I, I don't know the market, but you have to run it by the local hard money lender. They will tell you exactly why your deal is uh, giving you trouble. Okay, thank you. I also have spoke with a, uh, a buyer here as well. I asked him, you know, what's the percentage pretty much that they're doing here? Because someone told me around 50 to 55%. He said like 60 to 65. So I'm trying to take mm -hmm. that consideration too when looking for the ARV when it comes to this market mm -hmm. here, like for our next mm -hmm. deal. But yeah, it's like a lesson yeah. learned. And then he even like stopped answering the phone. So we're just going to cancel the contract with him on Monday. I'm just going to keep moving because I'm not about to keep chasing and following you. Like you don't want to do it. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. He just no, literally started the phone for like a week. So, mm -hmm. yeah. 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 I mean, it's, it's uh, like uh, we say all the time in the industry, which I hate it. It's a numbers game, but yeah. it is, it is a numbers game. Yeah. Yeah. I don't like it, but it is, it is true. <laughs> It is true. Vicky, talk to me. What what do you have? Hey, Ben, thank you for the opportunity for uh, going back to me. Um, but just no to give you a problem. rundown where I am, um, I'm mm -hmm. basically doing the basic as you um, mentioned. I got lost along the threads along the way. So what I've been doing basically with PropStream is my market is I'm here in San Diego, which I've been here only four months now. So I'm learning the market. Oh. But my main market is Jacksonville, Florida, because I lived in Jacksonville, oh. Florida. And I have a good network of potential buyers in Jacksonville. So what I'm doing is um, I'm on the phone every day, all day. Um, I'm retired, so I'm committed at least six hours once I put my grandkids on the bus in the morning. I'm on real estate from 10 to about 5, being after that, before I go to bed, do some emails. Um, so I'm pulling a buyer's list here in San Diego, and I do a lot okay. of skip tracing myself. Yes, it is time consuming, but I'm working on a, uh, I'm retired, so I have what, social security, but I'm good. So basically mm -hmm. what I'm doing is doing a twofold. So I'm pulling a list from PropStream, um, asking Tiana, Divorce, all the mentions that would create a motivation. And I just play around with it and I'm doing calls. And um, sometimes I have failed, ran into where PropStream may be a little outdated because ma'am, that house has been sold. Ma'am, what do you, you know, that kind of stuff. So I don't mm -hmm. dig into it. I apologize for the call. Have a good day. But overall, I'm doing good. And I want to be just like the other member said that she want to go at it aggressively. And this is where I am, too, because I'm retired. I took an early retirement three years ago. I lost 30 percent of my income, which was my oh, strategy, because that would promote me to strive every day versus me having that sixty thousand dollar cushion. I won't be so persistent. So I feel that yeah. I've been. Is. I feel that I have gotten that ball up to the hill. Next year is coming down, a dominant effect, and I will be profiting. I'm happy to be in this mastermind uh, program with you. I think it's a good thing that you started with because everybody is like charging 
five hundred to grands of dollars. I mean, who really oh, yeah. have money that way now? So oh, yeah. I think it's a good thing that you're doing because when you win, we all win. I win, That's you win. It. We all win. And we can help you one another it. learn, but you have to be persistent every day, every mm-hmm. day. So I did mm-hmm. dedicate my day just like I was working nine to five. So this That's is it. what I do, my real estate nine to five. So I'm talking to people. But the thing about it, Ben, I'm more or less into commercial. I don't know how I got oh. thrown in there. I, um, I'm, I have eight single family facility. Uh, I had a gentleman have provided his LOI, his bio. I'm networking. I mean, I'm very vetting my potential buyers because when I'm asking buyers like okay if you a facility buyer show me your website or give me a bio so they are giving me information that they are vetted and then wow. once they interested I say okay give me an LOI so I had yeah. a gentleman that picked a uh, facility off my list it was in Georgia for two meals so he wanted to put an offer in for 1.8 so I say well let's give me an LOI for 1.8 that you can show the seller that you can purchase. So he said, well, Vicki, let me give you 500,000 down and we do seller finance, whatever. I said, no, let's do this because your LOI is at 1.8. He said, well, give me two days. So I told the broker, okay, he wants two days. So he texts me that night. So well, Vicki, I can give you a LOI in the morning. So that morning, Charles Schwab sent me a letter for $7.5 million. So he would have way wow. better enough to purchase his property. Wow. But it didn't go through because the seller picked another offer. But this is what I'm working with wow. uh, commercial. And I hope that you can work with me because I'm in San Diego. I have received a referral for two uh, motel sellers. One wow. has retired. He's in Puerto Rico. He, Puerto Rico. He's offering me to bring him a investor and a saying with another and that's through a referral so i'm wow. learning commercial at the same time so hopefully that we can uh network on some of these things not network but we can joint venture being because this is way more than what i expected but i'm not going to limit myself <laughs> well vicky let me tell you one thing let me tell you one thing you are in a whole different category whole different category that I think (laughs) that I think is going to benefit the people in the mastermind. I hope you guys are ready. Look, we didn't start the training before like two hours ago or whenever it was. We started right now because if you're doing that, Vicky, I'm going to tell you one thing. You need one deal, one deal. That's it. That's it. One deal to to literally make you a, a, a millionaire. Uh, single family, uh, I mean, single tenant buildings are, in my opinion, uh, triple net uh, is, in my opinion, the Rolls Royce of real estate investing. Uh, that was, that's part of my plan, you know, take you guys to, through that journey. Uh, but you can certainly start with triple net and single tenant buildings because mm-hmm. that is easier than houses, a lot easier. And what you do, what you do to, uh, to get buyers more effectively is you go on LinkedIn. You go on mm-hmm. LinkedIn. Uh, yeah, great job, Nancy. Uh, says great job to Vicky. Fantastic Thank job, you. Vicky. I think you, you are you are killing it. Uh, so here's what you do. Uh, and, and if you guys want to switch to this, I mean, you guys can at any time. Go on LinkedIn, create your beautiful profile, work on your profile on LinkedIn. And go after the Paneras of the world. Uh, start putting, keep your keep your uh, your ear open about the market. After mm-hmm. after uh, the virus um, or the pandemic, Panera realized that they were they were way behind the eight ball. I mean, they were they were so behind. That the Panera in the last two years has completely changed their strategy. Panera, as you guys know, used to used to have to get out of your car, go inside, make your order, sit down, and enjoy it. It was a very nice environment. I used to go to Panera all the time to uh, to work, but they realized that they lost a ton of money because 
they needed a drive through. They needed to do what Starbucks were, was doing, which is Starbucks has a ton of drive throughs and you can mostly only do that if you have a single tenant building. So what Panera has been doing is they've been very aggressive. They, they've been like the top buyer for single tenant buildings in the United States. So what you need to do, Vicky, is you need to make your profile on LinkedIn very nice, you know, put your best picture up there, you know, put your resume on there, put your connections on there, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Tell, tell, you know, tell your story in your bio, you know, just, just kind of make it really nice mm -hmm. and start sending connection requests to the heads of real estate divisions for uh, multinational corporations like Panera. Mm -hmm. Okay. Panera, you can do it with Panera. You can do it with, uh, with, uh, other restaurant chains and connect with those, with those, um, heads of real estate divisions, not mm -hmm. only because they're going to be your buyers, but because they're going to connect you. If mm -hmm. you, if you befriend the head of the division that, that buys all the single tenant drive through buildings for Panera, if they can't buy it, they will tell you, hey, I have a buddy who, you know, who, who, who might be able to help you. They're mm -hmm. very well connected. These people get paid millions of dollars to grow Panera to, 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 to be a national corporation, multinational, really. Uh, and, and that's what they do. They, they buy mm -hmm. a ton of real estate. If you get Panera to buy one of your buildings, I, I did a deal with a, with a gate gas station. You being from Jacksonville, you know, Gate Gas Station mm -hmm. is, is, uh, is, is out of Jacksonville. Mm -hmm. Gate Gas Station was, uh, was uh, uh, I networked, like you see me networking. Networking is everything, okay, you guys? If you guys are not networking and you're trying to do everything from behind a computer and stuff like that, you are wasting your time. The most powerful thing you can do is to network. And we're going to talk mm -hmm. about that every time. But I was networking with, with uh, I called a seller, uh, and, uh, you know, the seller said, well, I don't want to sell you my house. And, and, and I said, why not? And she goes, well, because it's an investment property. I'm like, oh, so you're an investor. Yes, I am. And, 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 and she was older, older lady, 70 something. And, and I said, what, what do you do? Blah, blah. And she's like, well, we, we run, you know, I'm very connected to the city of Jacksonville, blah, blah, and development divisions of the city of Jacksonville, et cetera. And so, and so I invited her for lunch and just, just to network. Right. And so, and so she ends up connecting me to the president of the real estate acquisitions division uh, for gate gas station. And when I spoke to her, she's like, Oh yeah. So we're buying anything on Blanding Boulevard. <laughs> you know where that is there, Vicky Blanding mm -hmm. Bull Boulevard in Jacksonville. Yeah, and mm -hmm. we pay, this is what gas gate gas station was doing. If you are able to find us uh, some land, we will buy anything that is at least two acres that we can rezone for gas station. And uh, we pay, brace yourselves, we pay $2 million an acre, $2 million wow. per acre, right? And so I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, this is fantastic. So, so I went at the time, I went on list source. And, and I pulled my list of all properties, all vacant land that was, that was, uh, uh, that met their criteria. Right. And we started cold calling cold, just like you're, you, we have you do here. This skill mm -hmm. that we're teaching you is so fantastic. You, you can take it to a whole new level. Mm -hmm. We started cold calling. I connected to Mr. Gary, somebody, I can't remember his name now, his last name, Gary, somebody, uh, this property was three and a half acres. Okay. And, uh, it was already zoned as a gas station forward slash, uh, uh, boat, boat repair something. And it, there used to be a repair something on it. Uh, and so I, uh, you know, I, I got a hold of, of Gary, Gary, what's his name? I think he's on my CRM. Let me see. Let me find it. Cause it's going to bother me. Uh, Gary, some podio. I, I use podio. Uh, what's his name? So, anyway, so, so, so I'm mm -hmm. sorry. 
So I was going to say why you look at that name. What I was going to say is that just to feed off what you're saying, I'm basically doing those things that you're saying. And I still think that my, my strategy is because I'm finding commercial, um, they are looking at closing, you know, maybe 90 to 120 days. And I said, well, what I want to do in the meantime is do a wholesale deal because I'm trying to build capital um, so I'm trying to do them both. And I think what I'm trying to do is so many things. There are so many loose ends. Cause I, I have, I've been having a LinkedIn and, um, I'm getting connections. So I'm paying attention to that. I'm marketing mm -hmm. myself. Um, I had someone, I market myself on this mobile home site and believe it or not, they touched reached out to me, sent me an email that, hey, Vicki, we are looking for more mobile home buyers. So who are you and what is your affiliation? Because mm -hmm. I'm defining myself as an acquisition and this, I'm learning as I go. I don't know. Oh, but I, fantastic. Listen people, I listen to people talk to me, but then mm -hmm. I write it down. Then I go back and Google, what is that? So yeah, I'm learning the fantastic. language. You know, so those are my strategies. Yeah. So hopefully we can, and what I want to do with someone from this group, um, because I'm working every day, hopefully I can partner up with someone that's doing every day, all day, like me, so we can share and push each other, kind of like, oh, all that that's great. because I know you're yeah. busy and, you know, where I fall short, maybe this team member can say, well, hey, Vicky, try this, or I'm doing mm -hmm. this, or maybe we can try strategies together to empower one another. So hopefully there's someone, you know, that's working every day like me, you know. Oh, that's so fantastic. Oh, yeah, that that's that's why we're in the mastermind, you guys. This is, this is why, look, I didn't know you guys. This is the first time that I've ever spoken to Vicky. And, and this right here just, just made your time, you know, your whatever... Uh, you can take the strategy to whatever heights you want to because it is so powerful. Commercial real estate, in my opinion, is, is like I said, especially single tenant buildings, the Rolls Royce of real estate. You can't, you can't beat it. Nothing can. Uh, does anybody know what triple net means? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm learning that too, but um, I think that's like net leasing commercial properties. Yeah, uh, it's uh, triple net is is basically, let's start with a house. Everybody <laughs> here has expressed desire in building capital so they can buy rentals. And, and the rentals come with problems. I, I used to have a lot of rentals. I don't do that strategy as much anymore. But uh, rentals come with a lot of problems. Number one is the tenants. The tenant, big pain in the rear end if you don't screen them correctly. Uh, but you don't have time to screen them correctly because you're trying to get more properties. So you hire a property management company. And that property management company charges you a fee. So you're probably cash flowing your properties by maybe 150, maybe 200 a month. You know, So you have to get a lot of those rentals. It is a solid strategy. I'm not knocking it, okay? It's, it's, it's really good strategy. You can do it. I'm going to teach you a lot of things that we do to minimize some of those things. But you are ultimately responsible for the maintenance of that property. You're, you're ultimately responsible to pay the taxes on that property. Uh, and, and, and you are ultimately responsible to pay for the insurance of that property. So the tenant carries their own insurance as well. And you need to require them to have tenants insurance as you guys already have probably imagined. But you as the owner, you have to have insurance. You have to pay the taxes and you have to pay for the repairs uh, or the maintenance because uh, you can't really force the tenant to do any of that stuff. And that is where a lot of people, you know, don't, don't like the business and then they choose another business and then they, they, they do other things and they give up. They, they worked their, their way up. They graduated from wholesaling to flips and then from flips, they graduated to buying holds. And, and then, you know, they thought that buying and holding was going to be where they wanted to go. I call that the evolution of the investor. I have some, some things that I've created in the past, you know, where we go through the evolution of a real estate investor. And, uh, and you realize that at the very height, you go through 10 different steps I created which they're very logical. And then at the very top, you have triple net leases. 
<laughs> which is the height. Why? Because triple net leases, you don't have to pay for the insurance. You don't pay for the taxes and you don't pay for the repairs or the rehab, the rehab of the building. So if you got Panera to come in, they look at the building. Panera doesn't want you to repair the building because they're going to do it according to their own specs. Uh, or if you got, you know, uh, let's say Carl's Jr. to come in and, and, and rent out your building, then what's going to happen is Carl's Jr. needs to needs to go ahead and fix and, and, and do everything in that building that will make it look like a Carl's Jr. restaurant. So all you really are doing is you literally are holding the paper. I mean, you're not even responsible. If something happens at that place, guess what? Their insurance pays for it. If, if vandalism, their insurance pays for it. You know, they make the repairs. At the end of the year, they're the ones who pay the taxes uh, to, to the county. If, and, and, and this is a big, big if, if you get one of those, those buildings, you work out a deal with the owner, uh, and, and let's say you buy it and you, 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 be, you become the new owner. When you buy that property, if you show the bank a contract, a lease that you have with a, with a national tenant, they underwrite the tenant, not you. Meaning they'll give you a loan to buy that property using somebody else's credit, and that's a national tenant. So the national tenant's credit worthiness is going to vouch for you to get the loan to buy that property. Is the Rolls Royce of real estate investing because you don't use any of your money, you don't use any of your your credit, you don't use any of your your maintenance money or savings account. You don't you don't pay the taxes. You don't pay for anything. They literally take care of everything. the The best tenant you can have is a national tenant. Any other tenant is going to give you trouble, but a national tenant like Panera is going to be the best tenant you ever had. And they're paying down your loan over time as well. They will never give you trouble. They, they'll give you a lease, typically a lease, when you give it a, a, a regular individual, regular tenant, is for a year. But with a national tenant like Panera, they will not lease, it, lease that property for a year. They'll lease it for, for at least uh, you know, 10 years. With rent increases, meaning you know, if they paid you uh, $10,000 a month, then every year that's going to increase until a preset amount, let's say 13, 14,000 over 10 years per month. So your wealth is increasing every year because you have increases while the cost or the mortgage uh, that you owe is going to decrease and you get all the fantastic benefits of real estate. You get depreciation, you get write-offs, you get, you get appreciation, you get, uh, you get all kinds of perks from the government. The government wants you to invest in real estate. The, 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 the tax code was probably invented by, uh, written by real estate investors, no doubt about that, because it only favors the real estate investor. So if you're wholesaling, if you're flipping, you don't participate in that. As a matter of fact, there's, there's local uh, laws and, and uh, uh, mandates and, and, and guidelines and rules that punish you for being a flipper, such as uh, when you get some types of loans, you cannot get a loan uh, if you haven't owned the property for more than uh, six months. So that is to prevent... So that if you're flipping the property and selling it to a to a market a retail buyer, they can't buy the they can't approve that loan because that property was not seasoned. Uh, so so it has to be longer than six months. So then a pool of buyers can't even look at your property because they're not going to get approved. Uh, and and that is because people are trying to flip properties and and the tax code or the governments don't like that. What they like is buying and holding real estate and the Rolls Royce of all of that is triple net leases. Tri triple net leases are incredible, amazing. Any questions, anybody? Thank you for that feedback, uh, um, Ben. But I will you know, continue to look forward to that step-by-step -step process because I think that will help me stay focused and, and persistent every day versus me 
getting frustrated with doing so many things. Mm -hmm. So that would help me a lot. So I look forward to that. Thank you for your time. No problem, Vicky. Thank you so much. And to everybody else, I think we're going to wrap it up right there. Um, I am seeing your comments there, uh, Marian. Uh, it is, uh, we can pull some lists uh, for uh, single tenant uh, buildings. We can't get those from PropStream. I will work on that. Uh, whomever wants to, uh, to, to network with Vicky, uh, whomever wants to also do some, uh, some commercial outreach, et cetera, we can put together a little plan to do that so we can do that. Uh, but send me a message or put it on the chat. You guys let me know. Uh, but uh, we spent about three hours and 20 minutes or something, or no, two hours and 20 minutes on this call. Uh, so I appreciate you guys being here. If you guys have any more questions, um, you know, ask them on the chat. I think that today was a pretty good, solid foundation for everybody so that we don't have to have a meeting tomorrow. If anybody, whether it's in the recording or on the chat or anything, if you guys see something on there, as you guys can see, I do take my time. I'm putting a lot of time into you guys. I hope um, I can make a request of you. If you see somebody on the chat that's lost or whatever, you know, help me guide them. I don't have time to, uh, to dedicate as much as I would like to to everybody because I do have to do some things uh, over here with my own business, etc. So I would pretty much appreciate, you know, that if you guys can help me answer some questions that somebody might be asking uh, on the chat that wasn't able to attend this meeting here today, I would appreciate that. And I'll wait to see some of the feedback back there on the chat to see if we're going to have a meeting tomorrow or not but obviously we're going to cover the same stuff that we covered here today uh abby you know don't worry about it tomorrow of course you know it's it's your day off so so um i will take care of that myself if there's any additional questions uh please put them on the chat or send me direct messages i will get to you uh, eventually be if you really need to get a hold of me i will say this don't give up. Uh, and you will see this with a lot of successful real estate investors is they will give you time. They will give you time and they will talk to you. Uh, and everybody says this once you get to a certain network in real estate is be persistent. Like if you need to get a hold of me, be persistent. Call me, call me, bug me, bug me, bug me until I answer you. If you're not bugging me, <laughs> I will probably... You know, <laughs> I would probably forget about you, but bug me, bug me, bug me. I do that with, uh, with, with Abby, you guys. I have to bug Abby a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. I, I call her, she's my boss. She really, she really is my boss because <laughs> she tells me, you know, and I depend on Abby a lot because I want good deals. So I try to make sure that Abby knows that I respect her and I, and I try to treat her the best I can. But I do have to bug her a lot because she is busy. So don't be afraid to bug people if you really want something in this group. Hopefully that comes across correctly. I think the replay is going to be a big help for anyone who didn't catch today, Ben. So you're very appreciative um, to offer another day. But this meeting, I think, is going to be a big eye-opener for those who didn't come today. So oh. it would be big help. I'm happy to hear that. Uh, I'm here to help you guys, uh, and uh, Abby's here to help you guys, um, and uh, you guys just let us know. Don't be upset at us if we can't get, get back to you uh, in a timely manner. Just be persistent, persistent, all right? Thank you, yeah. ben. Thank you, Abby. You're very much welcome. If you need anything, guys, um, I put in the our email to the chat box later, uh, I mean, earlier. So just send us an email if you wanted to set up a call. Um, let us know as well. Um, most of the time, I'm not the one responding to the email. I do have an assistant. But if it needs my attention, I'll surely be there for you guys. Sounds good. Thank you, right. you guys. And thank you, Abby. Hey, I really thank appreciate you. your time. You guys, awesome. you guys don't, don't, uh, don't underestimate. Abby is really, really busy. <laughs> and she was here with us for two hours and 20 minutes. And I really appreciate that, Abby. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you as well. Good luck to everyone. Thank, Thank you, you, guys. We can talk later or anytime. Please hit me up. I just sent you a message, okay?
sure. Got it. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you guys. Thank one. you guys. Have Thank a good you, day. Thank, Thank you, everyone. All right. Bye-bye now. Appreciate it.